Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Today, I am so excited to be joined by Jenna Hermans. She is the author of a fabulous book called Chaos to Calm. And oh, this is going to be such a valuable conversation because let's, let's face it, motherhood is chaotic. It is chaotic day in and day out. But Jenna's really figured out how to gain some calm amongst the chaos of life and her wisdom her insight her knowledge is phenomenal so with that being said jenna welcome in i'm so excited to be joined by you today thank you so much amy for having me i'm so happy to be here oh thank you so much so can you tell your listener our listeners more about yourself who you are what you do and who you serve Absolutely. So um, I'm a mom of four. I have 16, 15, 13, six-year-olds. And as you already so generously shared, I'm the author of Chaos to Calm, Five Ways Busy Parents Can Break Free from Overwhelm. I'm also the co-founder and COO of a transformation agency called Be Courageous. My husband and I are the co-owners and um, co-runners. Is that a word? Um, We run our business together. Um, I also am a high performance coach and I lead workshops, give talks and uh, do speaking engagements all around the concept of calm, um, courage and high performance as ambitious mother, woman, person trying to, we're not even trying, but like doing, you know, doing all the things that we desire to do. I love it. Now, I feel like so many of us as entrepreneurs can identify with the word you used, ambitious. We identify as ambitious entrepreneurs. And that can be such a strength, but I feel like in a way it can be a detriment to us because we want all of the things right now. So how have you gone on your journey of finding calm amongst the chaos? You know, it was interesting in that I I needed the calm, the chaos had taken over and to the point where I was having anxiety, like constant anxiety and panic attacks. And so I I needed calm for my health and my overall well-being because I was before having found the concept of calm or really owning it and, and bringing it into my life intentionally. I was, a I felt like a terrible mother and a terrible partner. I wasn't showing up for my business. Well, I wasn't showing up for the people in my life. Well, I definitely wasn't showing up well for myself and was kind of just sludging through life versus enjoying it. Um, and there was one particular day, right. That it's like, that's the day, that's the moment, you know, the thing, the one big thing that happens that turns everything around. And it was one very special panic attack, that I had after myriad panic attacks before that. But for some reason, that one panic attack pushed me over the edge and I made a decision right then and there. I'm like, I'm not going to live this way anymore. I will not. I won't. I'm moving forward. So that was the moment that I decided we're moving forward with a different way of living and I'm going to do the research. I'm going to bring in experiences I have from my past, from my education. I have a master's in organizational management. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology. I ran a preschool for five years. I've done HR for over 15 years. It's like, I could so make this life run more smoothly. And that was the beginning. I love it because you've done it. You've been in the thick of it. I mean, as a mom of four, oh my gosh, like that's double the number of humans I have under my roof. And I can't even imagine But you said something that really resonated, like you needed that calm. You needed to find that calm because life is flying by and it's absolutely crazy. Like how fast time goes, like how is it 2023 already? When we were recording this, it is 2023. How is that possible? I feel like the last three years in particular have been just this blur. And I don't know. I feel like a lot of us have become almost addicted to the chaos because we don't know 
how to stop, but we do need that calm. So where did you begin when you identified, okay, I need this calm in my life. How did you go about creating that then for yourself and for your family? So the first thing I did was think about what is the one thing that every day that stresses me out, right? There, I mean, there's bazillions. There's so many, there's so many stressors and pressures throughout it every day, especially as an entrepreneur, as a mother and as a partner. Um, but I, the first thing I did was look at what's one thing that if I tackled that, that it would have a ripple effect, right? Like what's one thing that I can do that I can take off the stress plate from every day. And that was meal planning. That's what I realized for me, the stress of every day, four 30, right. The kids are home from school needing all the things. And I'm all of a sudden, you know, I need to be creative with what are we going to eat? What are we having for dinner? Every single day. And it was a stressor every single day of needing to, you know, after a whole day of, of thinking and being creative and talking to clients and, you know, so much output of energy that come 430. I don't want to be creative and look in what we have in the fridge and what's going to go bad soon. And what else do we have? And what can I pull together? Oh, every day, my cortisol levels 430 would go through the roof. And so that, that was the first thing I tackled. It was like that every day, if I have a meal plan, you know, every week that I look at and say, okay, we're going to make these meals every day. I can grocery shop against that. I can make sure we have everything we need. And that 430 stress is gone because I know, I know what we're doing. Yeah. And it's, it can be as simple as that, you know, identifying just that, that one thing, that starting point. I think so often we get so overwhelmed by all of the things that we can't even like zoom out and just identify one. And it doesn't matter what that one thing is for you. Like it's going to be very individualized to your life, but this is why stopping is so important. For me, it was lunches. It was making the kids lunches. That was my biggest stressor. And isn't it funny, like how this all seems to like, there's a common theme of food here happening. You know, there's so much stress around the food, but by the end of the day, we're, we have so much decision fatigue. Like we've made so many decisions. You were making decisions in your job all day long as moms were making decisions. We hit that wall of decision fatigue and we get stuck in that mom martyr syndrome. Like, okay, I have to do it all myself. I'm the one that needs to be making these decisions. When in reality, no, I, I don't. And something as simple as meal planning, I do the same thing because I get to the point, I can't, I can't think anymore. It has to be like written down. Do I like doing it? No, but I plan out the meals to save myself the stress later in the week. It's worth it to just think about it on Sundays, kind of plan out the week based on who has what, what day. And then we move forward and then we move forward and it gets easier because we take that action. So once you've started like gaining momentum with that, where did your journey take you? How did this transpire then from okay, we've taken the meal planning off. We're, we've done, gotten that off. We've streamlined it. This process is easier now. What was your next step in really creating that calm within your house? You know, it's hard to remember exactly like I did this and then I did that and then I did that. But the overarching theme was I want things to run more efficiently, right? That thing that it was very operational from the place that I started at, I guess, cause that's kind of one of my superpowers <laughs> in yeah. running businesses, um, is how do I make it all run more smoothly? And then after I got the infrastructure of efficiency going with laundry and meals and dishes and all, all of that, right. All the stuff that's just happening every day, every week, um, then I moved into my own mindset and I moved into my own self-care. And that was where I saw the biggest shifts happen. And when I realized that these were unique, right, that not every parent, not every mom does these things in these ways was after my, our youngest started preschool. And so I guess, may I share just a touch of backstory? I feel like that's absolutely to share for Please a second. Do. 
I'm interrupting this episode to share an incredible networking opportunity that happens every single Monday at 1230 Eastern Standard Time. Join us for Coffee Talk and meet and collaborate with other mompreneurs just like you. Networking has grown my business by leaps and bounds, and I would love to share this opportunity with you. All the details can be found in our show notes. Now back to the show. Thank you, Amy. So um, my oldest three children, right, the 16, 15, 13 year olds are not my biological children. So my husband and I, uh, when I met him, he had three little people, right? They were what was it? Three, two, and zero when I met them. And a couple years later, we're married. You know, I'm an, I'm a mom now of three overnight, no, like zero to one, one to two, et cetera. It's zero to three. Um, and in my mind, you know, it, it's chaos. It, it is chaos and their biological mom is not around. So it, it's, I, I'm the mom. And I, I just always assumed that other parents and moms in particular, having gone through more of the conventional route of becoming parents and going again, one at a time, had it figured out. I thought they had all this figured out already and that I was completely alone in the stress and overwhelm of parenthood and working parenthood. Um, And it was when our youngest went to preschool, right? When I think so many people may have experienced the same thing, right? You, when you start preschool, especially for the first time, all these parents want to meet each other right? You all want to get to know each other because who knows how long your kids are going to be in school together, right? Moving forward. If you all funnel into the same elementary school and then middle school, high school, et cetera. And then you're also maybe looking for some friends who have kids the same age. So meeting these parents for the first time and sharing our story, right? Of we've got the four kids. We also had moved to San Francisco from LA away from our family and our community. Um, And I'm getting asked all the time, wait, so you moved away from your from your support system. You have four children. You work, your husband travels for your business and you are somewhat like put together. What's going on here? What's your magic, right? <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not losing my cool every day at drop-off. And I shared, you know, I'm, I'm doing my meal planning and I do this with my laundry or I do this for my own self-care. And I, you know, I'm sharing these little bits of things and these parents are turning me like, oh my God, this is, this is new news for them. And I'm looking at them like, don't you, don't you already have this figured out? You, you, you must. And they're like, no, we haven't even done any of this. And so it really got me thinking about what is it that I'm doing differently or what is it that I'm just doing that's helping me rather. And it may be that these are not everyday normal actions and behaviors that a lot of parents have when approaching their family life or their work life, right? With the intentionality of how do I do this with calm, with efficiency from a place where it's supporting my mental health and that of my family and of my business. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Especially, you know, a place of like calm and efficiency. I feel like so often we have these deep rooted general generational beliefs that we have to do it all just like our parents did it and we can change the narrative just because it has been done one way let's start to leverage some of this awesome technology that's come out especially even since the pandemic can we talk about grocery pickup and delivery like game changer Mm -hmm. right there. That's one of the things I always start with my clients and they're like, I have no time. I'm like, okay, well, where are you spending your time? Because that's a choice. We get to choose where we're spending our time. And yeah, at first it can seem scary with the grocery pickup because it's like, but that's going to cost me money. But really it saves money, doesn't it? Because, Mm -hmm. you know, you're not walking through the Aldi aisle of shame, throwing all the extra junk in your cart that you never knew you needed until you're walking through that aisle. And it seems like that's going to be the answer to every single one of your problems by throwing those random gadgets in your cart. And it literally gives you back your time. I mean, even if you just have a 15 minute commute to the store, an hour at the store, 15 minutes home, there's an hour and a half that you could be spending with your kids, on your business, doing something for yourself. So really, when you think about it, 
things like grocery pickup and delivery, those actually save you so much time and energy and give you back some of that control. I mean, that was huge for me. Has technology helped you in navigating everything? Oh, I mean, exponentially. I I use Instacart every week, sometimes multiple times a week, which is amazing because again, big family, right? So just getting to Costco because we eat, we go through a lot of food as being six from being six beings. Um, And so it's a 30 minute commute there and back, right? At minimum, and that's without traffic. So that's, it's, I'm saved hours every week with just that. And then also being that I have a, a relatively busy schedule, Um, I use Calendly for people to be able to sign up and find time to connect with me, right? Instead of us sitting, going back and forth, back and forth, when can we meet up? When can we talk? Let's talk, you know, even just you and me, Amy, I think we did that. I threw you my Calendly link, we got together, we chatted, and now here we are, right? But who knows how much longer it would have been or how frustrating it is of going back and forth via email on when can you talk and when's a good time? Oh no, my kid you know, I just saw their appointment come up in my calendar when I looked again. And so it's like using these, like you said, these technologies that there are, that are around now just make life so much easier to make it more efficient. Again, back to that word, which is actually the first chapter of my book is called efficiency. (laughs) Um, But it's true. Right. And like, even let's say this is not a, a new a new piece of technology or a new element of the technology, but like using the washing machine delayed timer, right? Putting a load in at night and not needing to let it sit overnight in its own, you know, wet <laughs> right. <laughs> waiting in the morning to put it in the dryer, right? But to do a delay start, have it go off before everyone's awake. And then before you walk out the door, throw the load in the, in the dryer. Next thing you know, you get home, you've got a load ready for you, you know? And so there's these little, it's little things, but they add up. They really do. And I feel like it's the little things that are the biggest time sucks, you know, that we're doing over and over and over. I mean, even if something as simple as like emails, if you were saying the same thing over and over, make an email template in your business for it. Mm -hmm. You know, just start to think, okay, how can I make this process easier? And when you shift your mindset, you'll start to see those opportunities for automations and even things like, why am I doing this? Get it off of your plate. And I think a lot of times we spend our time doing things we think we should be doing, but in reality, they're not actually moving that needle forward. We're really throwing our time away by doing these mundane tasks during our day. So I love, love your perspective on that. Now, what I want to know is when you and I were first chatting, you said I asked you, I'm like, did you ever intend to become an author? And you're like, no, no, I did not. So how did you go from, okay, you know what? Like, I'm really doing awesome with this to now I'm going to share what I know with the world. How did you become an author. Tell us about that journey. So piggybacking on that story that I shared earlier about those families that I met at my son's preschool, um, you know, they were actually the ones that planted the seed in my mind. You should write a book with all of these things that you're doing. And of course I'm like, no, I'm not an author. I don't, I don't do that. Like I have enough on my plate. I'm not going to write a book also. Um, But that seed sat back there, right? It it definitely made, it got into the soil of my mind. And over the course of about a year, I just was journaling and writing again, like I said earlier of, you know, what are the things that I'm doing that are helping me? And every time I noticed, oh, I do this, right? Like on a night where I know it's going to be crazy and I'm schlepping my kids from here to there and and what, and then all of a sudden, you know, dinner again, um, using the crock pot or the instant pot and having a meal ready to go. Oh, that's something that I do small or not. Um, and, or mindset shifts, I would write those down. So anyway, for about a year, I was just writing these things down and, Mm -hmm about 12 to 18 months later, I felt complete. I don't know how else to describe it, but all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I've written all the things that I feel like have been helpful 
and have put me in this position of feeling calm amongst the chaos, right? From that, from that uh, panic attack moment to, to then. And realized, oh, there's a lot of content here. There's, I've written a lot down. Maybe I'll turn it into a book. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Isn't it funny just how those seeds get planted? And a lot of times we're like, no, 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 no. But then it turns out to be something that's so life-changing. I would love for you to share with our listeners more about the book. So picking up the book, what can you expect to find in it? Tell us all of the things. Give us a bird's eye view. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. So you can expect to find a friend in your book, a friend that's been there, that's done the research, who's tried the things, who's been working through the same, you know, complexities of life and is ready to say, I've got you, we're going to hold hands through this. And I'm going to give you, you know, all the tools that are going to help you out. Right. Yeah. And in there, because I've I've done the research, I've done the practicing. I I live this every day, and I live this also with my clients. I work with my clients on this, and in the book, I share stories of my clients and their successes of what they've done in their homes based on our time together um, that have helped them not just in in their home but in their lives um, to make life run more smoothly and, and for them to own their calm and their nervous system to be calmer. Um, but ultimately the, the way that it's structured is that there are five chapters, which serve as the five pillars of calm. And the first one, which we've already talked about is efficiency. The second one is habits, right? What habits serve you and serve your calm and which ones don't, and really taking an intentional look at how you spend again, your time. And what are these instinctual things that we do without even thinking about it? And are they serving us? Are they not? How can we make it so that we're actually having a relationship with our habits and our time? The third is community, the people we have around us and yes, in our home, but outside of our home as well. Who are the humans that we have that we're spending time with that influence our existence, our energy, our mindset, right? You know, you hear the, there are so many quotes about this, but it's like, show, you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. Or I love to say, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. And so the, the people that truly we spend time with influence who we desire to become, right? Or who we unintentionally become as well. And in addition to that, how to gain support from the community, because it's so important. We can't do this in isolation or rather we can do it in isolation, but it's pretty crappy. <laughs> it's no fun. It's, it's very painful to do it alone. Um, and then number four is communication. How do we communicate with those around us? right? Our people, again, in our home and outside of it, because it's so important to get the support that we need and to build those relationships, building rapport and trust through the people we interact with, again, to own our calm. And then the last one, which Amy, I think this is one of your favorites, is self-care. How do we take care of ourselves intentionally and not just surface. I'm not talking superficial self-care. I'm talking systemic, deep self-care. And again, micro moments, all these little things that add up, just like how we spend our time, you know, those things add up. How do we take care of ourselves in the, the micro moments and the moments in between intentionally and not that can support us and our calm? Yes. Yes. Because we are modeling for our kids. If they, you know, witness us acting like this stressed out mom that's always running around like a crazy person, what's that teaching them? You know, that's teaching them that, okay, that's how I guess you act as a mom. But it doesn't have to be that way. And what I loved in reading your book was just how real and relatable it was. It's like, oh my gosh, like, I felt like I was reading a book written by like a friend or a big sister. Like, you know what? I get you. I see you because I've been there. 
And here's what I've done to regain that control. And I've told you this before, like I wish I had this as a resource years ago because this would have saved me so much time and stress because a lot of the things, they're not hard to implement. They're very easy, but it's like, you know, something like the delayed laundry. Why didn't I think of that? You know, why didn't we think to do that? And it's, again, it's using the technology we have now to really make our lives so much easier, making our time work for us. But these five pillars that you go into within this book, they will change your life. So if you have not been aware of this book, I highly suggest go to Amazon, grab the book. Jenna, share where else we can get into your world, how we can buy the book, learn more about you, all of the things. Mm, thank you, Amy. So I have a website, jennahermans.com, where you can find free resources and downloads. One of my favorites is called Two Minutes to Calm, and it is a huge list of various things that you can do that'll get you to calm in two minutes or less, right? And that's free on my website under the downloads. Um, I also have a newsletter that comes out bi-monthly that has my blogs in it, where I'm doing events or other interesting information all around the concept of calm, of course. And it is not a long one because who wants to have this huge long newsletter showing up in their email box? You know, not me, that's for sure. So there's that. And then I'm also on Instagram and LinkedIn, all blah, 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 all those things. Um, not TikTok, can't be found there. Still on the fence about that one. Hear great Same. things, but I'm not there yet. Same. Okay. <laughs> I feel like that's, that's a commitment. Old. Once you're in, you got to like go down that rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the book is sold everywhere that you can find books. And if your local bookstore doesn't already have it in stock or they're out, you can always ask them to order it for you. And then you're supporting local while getting your calm. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Jenna, thank you so much for taking your challenges and your struggles and putting your secrets to kind of creating more calm into a tangible resource for us. Thank you so, so much. It's amazing. Again, five out of five stars. Highly recommend it. Pick up this book. Jenna, thank you so much for being here and for sharing with us today. Thank you so much for having me, Amy. And until next time, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 